Garfinkel. Duke is going to give you a steady diet of Marvin, ba Marvin Bagley III third and Wend Wendell Carter Jr. Look for St. John to play extremely hard to see if they can get over the hump. All right, let's join the third member of our team on the sideline, Shannon Spade. Hey there, guys. So Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski once called his very good friend Howard Garfinkel the most interesting man in the world. And boy, oh boy, would Coach K know, know that he knew Garf for over 40 years, both personally and professionally. And I want you to take a look at the necktie that Coach K is wearing in this game here today. That's actually a gift from Garf a few years before he passed away. Coach K said he wore it in several games in the NCAA tournament the same year he received it. And of course, it's only fitting that he wears it here today. All right, thank you very much, Shannon. Let's take a look at the Jeep starting lineups for Duke. I tell you what, they've got pros on this team. Grayson Allen, he's a pro. Wendell Carter Jr., he's a pro. Marvin Bagley, a pro. Meanwhile, Shamari Pons coming off a 31-point game against Xavier. St. John's needing to play their best basketball. They've lost 11 straight conference games as you take a look at the official. Duke. St. John's, and we're underway from the Garden as the Blue Devils control the tip. A little man-to-man -man early, but look for Chris Mullen to kind of switch up defense a little bit. Double in the post on Marvin Bagley, but also Wendell Carter Jr. Try to make it uncomfortable early, not give up easy shots. This is a series that dates back to 1938. Duke leads it 16-6. to They've won nine of the last ten. Duvall takes a jump shot. The freshman from Delaware, that's a brick, squirts out. Trent Jr. Count it. His daddy was the Shaq of the Mac. A old, former teammate of yours. That's right. Yeah, we played summer league together with uh, Gary Trent. And his son has the confidence, an outstanding three-point shooter, has size, has the body already, physical attributes. Trent coming off a 22-point game. St. John's, this one, goaltending is the call. And one thing St. John's got to clean up, you're talking about how do you lose games? Well, you can't give up second shot opportunities. You got to limit this Duke team, this talented Duke team, to one possession offensively. Now it's going to be a long afternoon. Chris Mullen, a legend. 54 years old, two-time Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee as an individual and as a member of the 1992 Olympic Dream Team. Won the Wooden Award as a player in 1985, leading St. John's to the Final Four under the legendary Lou Carnesecca. Duvall on the baseline. Bagley steps on the baseline, out of bounds. Marvin Bagley, the third, coming off a 12-point game on Monday against Notre Dame. And probably his best attribute is his ability to read the court to spread the ball around, not just score. And uh, another turnover. This time it's Bashir Ahmed. Here are today's Geico players to watch. Well, it's important. Trevon Duvall has been playing well, but not well enough. He's still learning from that point guard position. See Gary Trent Jr. And Trent Jr. knocking down back-to-back -back jump shots. <laughs> Duke taking a 6-2 early lead here at the world's most famous arena. Inside, nicely done as Tariq Owens kept it up high and banked it down. And that's the response you have to get. You, do, you can't allow them to kind of get on these 4-0, 6-0, 10-0 runs. You've got a bit of a response. Bagley. And that's what makes him so special, Jimmy Jackson. At 6-11, he can step out and hit 20 to 22 for James. What a prototypical four hybrid in the NBA off of pick and roll can step back puts defenses in a situation where how do you guard it Simon teardrop too strong Duvall the other way Bagley facing up now puts it on the deck gets to the bucket left hand scoop no he's fouled by Owens but one thing you can't do when you're playing against this St. John's team, you got to be connected to your man. And right here, you haven't been able to see it, but Marvin Bagley kind of gets lost on this screen. And the toughest thing to do is inside. Now it's a delay inside. Wendell Carter gets lost up top. You got to stay connected. And that's something from a freshman perspective, Gus, that they're still trying to learn on the defensive end. Bagley, 17 double-doubles this season. Duke freshman record. 
passing Jabari Parker and Gene Banks. First in the ACC and second in the nation in double-doubles with those 17 out of Phoenix, Arizona. And he misses both. 9-4 Duke. St. John's, one thing about these guys, they will fight you. Lost 73 to 68. That jump shot going down. 73 to 68 to six ranked Xavier on Tuesday at home. They had opportunities in that game. Well, think about this. Both times they played Xavier, they were in the game. Eight out of their last 11 games that they lost, guys, they lost seven points or less. And a steal, Bashir. Ponds up top. Count. Don't let this young man get four. He can score points in bunches. As he levels the game at nine, Ponds with five already. And another solid defensive effort for St. John's, which allowed him to get out and run. Another steal. Ponds knocking it out of Duval's hands. Baseline, Owens steps into his shot, short. And a whistle and foul will go against the Red Storm's Marvin Clark. But that's what you want in transition. I know it was a tough foul on Marvin Clark, but now you're able to get out and run and potentially get an offensive rebound before this long and athletic Duke, Duke defense gets set. One player I'm very impressed with is Grayson Allen. He had 37 against Michigan State earlier this season. Well, he's the leader. He's a senior in the starting lineup. Trent again. Mm. This kid has in the gym range, folks. Back to back to back threes. He's second in the ACC in three point field goal percentage at 44%. And he leads all freshmen in the country in that shooting percentage. But St. John's has to do a better job of identifying where he's at on the court and taking away his airspace. Pods will back it up. He's already scored a thousand points in two years. With the red storm, Owens has it knocked out of his hands, picked up. Here comes Bagley, kicks it. Trent Jr. Bagley trying to create space. No ball. Good defense by Three Owens. Red storm on the move to the bucket. Simon gliding and laying it in. But again, the ability now to get a stop. Justin Simon has kind of benefited from the vet not being in the lineup. He's grown so much. There you see his versatility. Duval trying to create inside and a whistle and foul as Wendell Carter draws the foul. St. John's though, playing with great energy against the fourth ranked team in the country. We're at the world's most famous arena, folks. This is the Garf on Fox. Garf? Tim Duncan, LeBron James. Gary Trent Jr. off to a big start for Duke. Well, coming off a 22-10 rebound effort against Notre Dame, let me tell you something, this young man has an extreme amount of confidence. He's worked on his game, in particular his long-range shot. The father was a beast, but he couldn't shoot it like this guy. No way. He said he's been beating his father since he was 13. But I don't recall seeing too many freshmen with a body like that, guns like that. Well, you get it out. I mean, if you remember how big and strong Gary Trent was. The okay? shack of the, the mat. The shack of the mat. Maybe undersized, but had a heart of a lion. So, he got good genes running through his body. So, Gary Trent Jr. right now, three for three from the three-point line. He was six of ten on Monday against Notre Dame from downtown. Duval down the lane. Feline quickness. Eye off the glass at there. And I like the move. Missed a jump shot down, the but that didn't deter DeVal from getting to the basket. And I love how he turned the corner and was able to finish with his left hand. And again, for all guards, you get low, center of gravity. Now you can explode, finish up, other side of the rim, and use that as a defender with a soft touch. And I think he has to do more of this, guys, to loosen up the defense and maybe that jump shot will fall in after him. DeVal from Newcastle, Delaware. Bad boys coming out of Delaware right. lately. Dante DiVincenzo at Villanova. Duval played with DiVincenzo on the summer circuit. Well, it's funny how now talent is everywhere. It's not just before it was maybe in New York or L.A. or Chicago or Detroit. It's everywhere now. Now the evaluation process is a, is a little bit different. How much responsibility does this young man have? Freshman point guard for Mike Krzyzewski starting. Well, you're at Duke, you're the starting point guard. That's right. I mean, that in itself is the pressure, let alone with the talent you have on this squad. 
Kicks it out baseline. That one deflected out of bounds. So many great point guards at Duke. Bobby Hurley, one of my favorites of all time. Tommy Amaker, Jay Will, Jason Williams, Come exactly. On. College player of the year. And even though we got a small dose of Kyrie, he oh, I forgot still, about that guy. But he, he, he good still too. left a, a, an impression on college basketball, even though it was a short stint. Here's Allen, baseline, Fred Jr., and he throws it out of bounds. Four turnovers for the Blue Devils. St. John's, one thing about them, they'll fight you. They're 0 and 11 in the Big East. It's been a struggle. Talk to Chris Mullen in his office before the game. It's hard on these guys right now, but they continue to fight, and his coach is proud of their effort. Well, they're tired of hearing, too, they're the best 0 and 11 team, you know, in the country, you know? Owens for the home. Nicely done. Yeah, in conference. And again, I love the patience when you talk about the activity on the defensive end, guys. It's translated over the, to the Red Storm to be able to execute with force and be authoritative and now just stay within this game. Skip pass, Bagley puts it on the floor, wrapped it around. Trent Jr. looking for a shot, steps up, finally missed one. Loose ball, batted around. Red Storm have it. Here comes Pons. He's missing his main man, Marcus Levet. Pons. Levet out for the season with a knee in. Well, you know where they also miss Levet? We talk about the 15 points, but it's on the defensive end because he was the lead guard that could really harass the opponents. And you miss that, especially late in close games, Gus. Grayson Allen. And he's fouled. Bashir Ahmed fouling him behind the three-point line. Well, back to the offense right now. A little pick and roll in the middle. Now you're able to slide down the course of the lane. And because you have shooters on the outside, it keeps the middle open. But I love the fact that when you run it, you set the pick if you're Owens. Now that forces the defense to jump over. You're going to be open down the lane. So Grayson Allen at the line. The senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Coming off an 18-point game on Monday against Notre Dame on 7 of 12 shooting. Prior to that, seven games prior to the Notre Dame game, he was just averaging nine points a game. He's been trying to figure out how to temper some of his aggression and also, as the veteran on this team, get his teammates more involved. But you know he can put the biscuit in the basket. What well, he can, too. And it's always an interesting dynamic for a guy like Allen that can score. But now you're surrounded by so much more talent, especially the guys in the post. So now you have to feed and play off of them because the better they do inside, Gus, it opens it up for the perimeter players for this Duke team to be more effective. Little pressure by Duke inside. A power jam. Nice dime. Bashir Ahmed. And Owens with eight early points. And that's huge because Owens is not giving you double-figure scoring points like they have a starting four. But right now, he's after defensively and, again, a well-executed play by the Red Sox. And Trent bounces it off of his knee. Five turnovers. Well, this is how you break the pressure. You force Duke to get down below the free-throw line. You penetrate on the baseline. Then, more importantly, Gus, you make the right play. 17-15. Blue Devil, Simon, the Arizona transfer, and they need more from him. Well, he's benefited, and I hate to say it from an injury, but think about his game as they've been able to evolve because he's been that second scorer they've been going to. Not only that, his versatility, I think, is really spotlighted in this offense. He can do a little bit of everything. So Tariq Owens with eight points. He averages eight points a game on the season. Pons. Inside, and he whips this one out of bounds. And, and those are the turnovers. That time, Tariq Owens is like, look, just throw it up. That's four turnovers. And again, when you're undermanned going against talent, you want to get as many off positive offensive possessions you can get without turning it over. Do that. All right, by Pons. Interesting matchup between those two guys. Allen. Six turnovers for Duke. Yeah, but three goals. The leading shot blocker in the Big East, known for his defensive prowess, but right now, he's making an impact on the offensive end, presenting himself in opportunities where now his teammates can just spoon feed him. St. John's with the ball now. 
17-15, Marvin Clark, the Michigan State transfer off the mark. We'll give you numbers as well. He had 19 on Wednesday against Xavier. Allen looking inside for Bagley. Duval across the lane, hangs in the air. And the rebound, and stick back, Bolden. He's another big body for Mike Krzyzewski's team. Well, Deval able to get to the lane. It forced the defense to collapse, and guess what? On the back side, now you're able to get an offensive rebound by Bolden by following the ball where it was going to pair him off at. Clark, wide open. Two good looks, though. Two good looks for Clark. Duke beating Notre Dame 88-66 Monday at home. All five starters scored in double figures. Led by Gary Trent's 22. Allen driving, lobbing. Bagley snapped it down and pounds it in. This kid is so active, so versatile. We talk about athleticism, right? To me, it's not that first jump. It's that second one when he hits the ground to be able to bounce right back up. And that's what he was able to do. Get that offensive rebound. Ahmed. And hits. They need Bashir Ahmed to stay energetic. He's from the Bronx. Averaging 12 a game and five rebounds. That's his first bucket. 21-18. Quick turn badly on the wheel for the hole. He draws contact. Duke 19 and 3, 7 and 3 in the ACC. They've got players. This young man, Bagley, is a lottery pick. They call him a 10 mumper. Only 10 months at Duke. 21 18. Back after this. Mike Krzyzewski. He coached at five star when he was the head coach at Army. Played at Army. Coached at Army. Played for Coach Knight. Who was a good friend of Coach Gar well, Howie Garfinkel. A lot of respect for Garf. 21-18 right now. As you know, the beauty of that as a player, you knew about the high caliber of college coaches that were going to be there. Who was there when you were there? I think it was Rick Pitino. I think he was there. But it was also other assistant coaches that were there. So you're getting instructions Breakdown instructions in your station from individuals who knew the game inside and out. You didn't have a, chance, a choice but to learn how to play the game the right way. Marvin Bagley, he plays the game the right way. Five points to start for the big fella. It's his first free throw. Had a 32-point, 21 rebound game versus FSU. His third 30-15 game of the season. Just you know you're special when the game just kind of comes easy to you. Where you don't have to force the situation, a certain bounce, a certain rhythm. And I love his demeanor in regards to he's not out here hunting for shots. Simon. Cross court. Ali Begovic in the game now. Along with Brian Trimble Jr. Three to shoot, they got a hurry. Simon forces it up. Mason Allen the other way. Excellent defensive possession. That time they sent Tamori Pons to three in the corner by Trent Jr. to so his weak hand, Gus. And Bagley's called for the foul. He goes over the back. And that's his first. So they want to guard Pons. They say weak which means they want to send him to his weak hand. Actually, Coach K joked about that. He really didn't have a weak hand, but you want to send him towards the sideline, and when he's on the sideline itself, on the wing, you want to send him to the baseline so he can't get to the middle of the floor. Pons has to stay aggressive offensively for the Red Storm. Got to look for a shot. Owens, a 16-footer. Back and going up high. Easy. Easy. Steal. Here comes Pons. He's got Simon trailing. Pons to the hole. Left hand goes down. What an anticipation that time. Understanding that the triple handoff was there. And Pons able to deflect with a little lazy pass that time by Bagley. 
Bonds out of Brooklyn, New York's Thomas Jefferson inside and a whistle and foul, Ali Begovic. You know how he's got to be strapped. You want to win? You've been close. These are the kind of plays that you got to have often defensively taking away what could be an easy opportunity for Duke and Pons as well as anybody in transition is tough to stop. 16 fouls now against the Red Storm. Carter back in the game with the ball right now, guarded by Ali Bekovic. And Dell. They say he's a lottery pick as well. Goes to the basket and draws the foul. I think you got to say a lot about this young man in there. Because he came in before Marvin Bagley. He was kind of the guy that they were going to anchor their hit shoe in regards to post play for Duke. Then Bagley came in, kind of put him to the side, but he didn't let his ego get in the way. They both feed off of each other. Give credit to his parents. Carter was 17 against Notre Dame on Monday. In 26 minutes, he had seven rebounds. He is the... Robin to Bagley's Batman. And now subs coming in for the Red Storm. Ahmed back in. Tariq Owens out. Looks like Ali Begovic will go out as well. Yakwe comes in for the first time. The junior from Mali, number 14. Second like free throw good. Yagwe, another rim protector. But the, the game has the feel and pace of where you want to be if you're St. John. Because you're right in shouting distance, only down five. You played some really good half-court defense. You haven't allowed Duke to go on the, one of those patented runs. Skip pass, Simon. Across the lane, down the lane. Rejected by Carter out of bounds. I mean, if it's not Bagley, it's Carter. If it's not Carter, it's Bagley. I mean, the ability for him now as a freshman to understand, not be married to the weak side of the court, but come and help out his teammates to get that block shot. 13 on the shot clock. Bonds guarded by Allen. Wants to use his quickness, quick release. Loose. Ahmed spinning. Knocked away. Trent Jr. to the bucket. Uh. Always tough the cross court pass that time. Gary Trent Jr. Was playing center field on that one, Gus. Was able to get an easy steal and dunk. Largest lead of the game now for Duke. Pond splitting the D, gets to the hole. Trimble. And out of bounds. Chris Mullen can't allow this one to get away from him. No, you can't, but you can't turn the ball over right here. The defense. That was easy to read, and now you're out in transition again. Another failed possession that time by St. John's. Duke now with an opportunity to stretch this lead to 9 or 10, which you don't want to be the Red Storm. Fred Jr. told me about his dad, Gary. I've been beating my dad since I was 13. He tried to back me down, but I got tough. I remember when he was little on the AAU circuit in Columbus, Ohio. And how he just shot up and give Gary a lot of credit. He started working with him on his shooting and ball handling when he was really young. Hans looking for space. Double team, baseline, triple. Can he hit one? Yes, he can. Good shot. <laughs> 27 23. Racing Allen. Right, gets it all and rejected by Yakway into the hands of Bagley, who elevates inside and lays it in. What a soft touch. That's his offense. Look, left hand right there, coming to the lane, knowing he couldn't get to the basket, but the recognition was there just for a nice little jump hook. Nine points for Marvin Bagley. Trimble. Ahmed step back jumping. Duke making it hard every shot for St. John's. Now Allen wraps it around to Trent. Bagley draws a double team, lost it. Pons picks it up. Look at it, gliding into the front door. And he just coughed it up. Yeah, too much right there. Instead of going straight line, he had an opportunity, guys. Racing out. Baseline. Right. 
Carter with a rebound. New shot clock for the Blue Devils. Junior on the court for the Blue Devils. Duke, St. John's, classic in the garden. Yakwe, get that out of here. Allen, not tonight, but his teammate got his back. Duke 29, St. John's 23. Arnold was the Pied Piper. And by Continental Tire for what you do. Welcome back to the Garb here at Madison Square Garden. Number four ranked Duke. Leading St. John's 29. 23. Other notable five-star alumni. Unbelievable cast of characters. You're talking about champions, MVPs, Patrick Ewing, Chris Mullen. The list goes on and on. And for more, let's go to Shannon Spake. Yeah, Gus, let's talk about Coach Mullen. He told me that one of the reasons he got on the, the radar for so many Division I coaches as a player was because of that five-star camp. See, he sat out his junior year in high school, so he was kind of off the radar. He went to the five-star camp, ended up making the all-star team. He said he was standing there with all of these players who were really well-known. They were all looking at him like, who is this kid? But, of course, gave him a name. Well, Chris Mullen, he went on to do some pretty good things. He took it personal. He said that when he was at camp and they called out his name, he was like, Chris who? He said, I'm, I'm going to show you. <laughs> and you're going to remember my, my you name. Go remember, yeah, for a long time. Chris Mullen, the only three-time Big East Player of the Year, 83 to 85. St. John's all-time leading scorer, 24. 100 points, 24-40 to be exact. And now Grayson Allen team. at the line. Member of the dream team. Yep. And his coach, the legend in attendance, Lou Carter second. Second free throw for Allen goes down. The funny thing about Chris Monty, talked to him yesterday at practice about his team and where he's at. He said, listen, I'm not going to yell. Throw chairs, that's not going to work. These kids are going to continue to play hard. We're going to continue to teach. We're going to get over the hump. Inside. And a nice bucket by Marvin Clark. I tell you guys, when St. John's takes their time, they execute. They get the shots they want. It's just when they speed up a little bit more and turn it over, that hurts it. Trent hit his first three threes. Duval driving. This is the layup, but there is Carter for the finish. And once again, the dribble drive breaks down the defense now. Three Owens has to help from the weak side. That gives Carter free reign to the basket to get another offensive putback. Carter with four. Fox. A lot of dribbling picked it up. Deflected Simon on the baseline. Simon one for five to start this game. And Trent throws it out of play. Nine turnovers for Duke well, Gus, in the first half. The better your defense is in regards to one-on-one, -on -one, now look at everybody inside the paint. They got to come over, especially Owens has to help. That gives free reign right to Wendell Carter Jr. So it's a premium put on one-on-one -on -one defense, and so now you don't break the defense down and have to help your teammates. Duke has turned over nine times. They average 12 per game. Inside. Oh, and oh, what a nice play. He didn't bring it down. Tariq Owens with 10. If I'm St. John's, I'm going to continue to run that middle pick and roll because now it's putting Duke in a situation where they can't help off the wings. And Tariq Owens is doing an extra job of setting the pick, rolling, and finishing inside. Allen. Trent. Wide open. Can't do that. That's his 4 three of the first half. And how about Grayson Allen playing facilitator right now? The calming presence as a senior on the court, understanding how to get his teammates in the right positions to be successful. That's senior leadership right there. Bro. Moshe Shevsky talking to him yesterday as Simon gets to the basket. And a foul on the floor. We were trying to compare Grayson Allen to who? A combination of Jeff Horn II and Bobby Sur. He can do a little bit of everything. 349 to play. Bobby Sur's name been coming up a lot. <laughs>
matchup coming up this week with North Carolina. Should be an interesting one. Chris Mullen trying to get his first conference win in the Big East. His teams continue to play hard. They just have to figure out a way to get over the hump. St. John's with the basketball. Palms. Draws a double team, leaves his feet, draws a foul. And, and that's why you want to keep, you know, talking to Coach K, palms away from the strong hand because he's able to maneuver and be tricky within tight spaces. Now he's able to split the defense, and if he doesn't score, he's picking up a foul or he's making a play for his teammates. Mason Allen picks up his first. Rolling to hand off to Clark. Simon circles. Here comes Owens out the screen. For Pons. Driving. Leaves his feet. Almost threw it away. Three to shoot. Simon. And a shot clock violation against the Red Storm. How about Wendell Carter? That time it was he and Marvin Bagley playing Pons, and he switched out and forced him to the baseline to give it up, and then came back to contest the shot by Simon. That's why they've become a much better defensive uh, team the last five games. He's Duke. Well, to shoot, he fouled. He's got that ball on the string. Potter on the post, looking inside, back in. And a whistle at five. Good recognition by Wendell Carter. Well, they look for each other. They play off each other. And Wendell Carter actually missed badly on the initial cut, but he stayed with it and was able to fire it inside. And look at this. He's inside. Hands are high. And when you have two big men that can pass with four points that are willing to pass, it's going to be tough to stop it. And talking to the Duke coaches, they told us that all those these two players have to share the spotlight right now. Next year, when they're in the NBA, that's what they're going to have to do in professional basketball. That's right. I mean, versatility is something that in the, today's game you have to have, especially when playing in the post, because you're not just going to be centered up on the block expecting just to get passes, and then you score. You're going to move. You're going to pass. You're going to accept double teams. You're going to be a pick-and-roll guy. And both of these young men have committed themselves to having a more well-rounded game which benefits them at the next level. Ahmed, double pump, and knocks it in. Bashir Ahmed with five. St. John's trying to keep this close, 37 to 29. And as a point, St. John's keeps this game just under double figures. You want to go into halftime, feeling good about yourself. Duval driving, lost it. Loose ball picked up Owens on the floor. Ponds in transition. Ponds baseline. Active hands for Duke as Trent got a hand on that basketball. Good transition defense that time by the Blue Devils to get back. Pons. Nine to shoot. Ahmed to the hole. Can't get the roll. St. John's out of control on that trip. Yeah, and it just didn't seem comfortable in that defensive possession, but give Duke a lot of credit. Hands were active, sliding their feet, cutting off spots, made it tough defensively on St. John's. And a whistle. Looks like a foul on a screen called against Duke, and that will go against Bagley, his second. Yeah, right there, that shove off on Tariq Owens inside. He was right in front of the official. Easy call to make. 11 turnovers for the Blue Devils. They average 12 on the season, allowing the Red Storm to stay in this game. Back to the... And Mike Fratello, the czar. Tommy Amaker was the first big recruit for Coach K that started it all at Duke. Mike Krzyzewski. 70 years old now, 38th season, one of the greatest coaches in the history of the game of basketball. Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer in 2001. He's the winningest coach in college basketball history, five national championships. 
Coach K, 12 Final Four appearances, 23 NBA lottery picks, 57 NBA draft picks. Jimmy, I think Coach K, he ain't bad. <laughs> you know, you know the translation also, his ability to be able to adapt and coach USA Basketball, the pro, the respect that the players have, but he had a voice that they weren't afraid to listen to. And Ahmed going to the basket. More on Coach K. Six gold medals, as you mentioned, Jimmy, as coach of USA men's basketball. And yesterday we were talking to him about how he had to make a transition. David Robinson in attendance. He had to make a transition to coaching the All-Stars like LeBron James and Jason Kidd and Kobe Bryant because they all had their own routines. Yep. So some days he had to come to practice, coach for 20 minutes, and then give him a spa day. How about that? Well, yeah, I think it goes back to this, though. Even with his team, his team dynamic change every year. So he's not stringent on it has to be A, B, C, or D. He allows the flow to happen. It's the same thing with professional players. They're a little bit different, but that's what made him so special, why he was able to adapt right away. And a whistle, another offensive foul called against Duke. 101 to play in the first half. 37 to 30. This time it's Bolden. And that's his first. Two offensive fouls when Bolden and Bagley both being a little bit overly aggressive, trying to post up and a chance for St. John's to cut this lead. Once again. 12 first half turnovers for the Blue Devils. Pons to the hole. Up and in with the left hand. Beautiful move, but patience on the pick and roll. Allowing the big to set it, allow Pons to turn the corner. 5-0 run for the Red Storm. 38.7 seconds to go. St. John's fighting hard on their home floor. Something about this game, it's almost like a basketball basketball feels like I'm watching jazz sometimes it's hard to say and no some to of guard. these characters well think about everybody that went through there how could you say no to God I mean you just couldn't right now St. John's trying to say no to Duke but Storm now they pack it in 2-3 zone we saw him work on this yesterday in practice when we knew that Coach K came out with the man-to-man -man play switch it over to zone Duval's got to make good decisions as a point man. Allen up top. Duval down the lane. The floater. Rims up. But Bolden is there for the follow. Wow, valuable minutes by Bolden. Three seconds to go. Ponds down the lane and foul on the floor. And an offensive rebound once again comes off the dribble penetration. The patience by the Blue Devils versus the zone offense. Again, the help by... For sure, man, takes a body off of Bolden, able to sneak in there and get an easy two. So Pons goes to the line, 39 to 32. Pons with nine points in the first half. Ah, Missed the free throw. And that should take it to the end of the first half, but it does. 39 to 32, Coach K's Blue Devils with the lead but the red storm with a great effort against the fourth ranked team in the nation trent had 14 bagley with 11. and we've got a 39 to 32 game let's go to shannon spake with coach mullen coach mullen you know duke is so much balance offensively what they can do on the perimeter what they can do in the paint how do you think you guys have counterbalanced that in the first? Yeah, we got a good inside out attack. Actually, we've been too big, so we've done a pretty good job overall. We got to execute a little bit better on offense. You know, I think we've done a pretty good job defensively. We got to do a better job offensively execute. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about your defense. You got a handful of steals, double-digit turnovers. Are you guys creating enough opportunities for yourself? We are. We got to convert in the open floor. You know, we I thought we missed some opportunities with, with those turnovers in the open floor. We got to convert those. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Gus. All right, thank you very much, Shannon. That's the end of the first half with the score, Duke 39. St. John's 32 will send you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles right after this. Duke on top of St. John's as we prepare for the second half. Gus Johnson along with Jim Jackson. As we mentioned, folks, Jimmy played at five-star. And as Chris Mullen said, best players in the country were there.
What do you remember about your time coming from Ohio to right. play in this legendary summer camp? The competition, and not just in the games, it was in our station work, our drill work, as you see right there. You had to compete in every situation, okay, all the way through, and that's what I remember the most. Young Jimmy Jackson with his five-star outfit on. Outstanding Did you give him numbers baby. back then? Did Game you give him some numbers, numbers that summer? Game. An outstanding player, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at the Jeep halftime stats. Wait, both teams shooting 50%. Duke with the 12 turnovers. That's been a little bit high for them. Again, points off turnover. St. John's been able to capitalize. See if they can continue that in the second half. All right, let's go to Shannon. Yeah, Jimmy, you just mentioned those 12 turnovers. Certainly the name of the game for the first half of the Duke Blue Devils. Associate head coach Jeff Capel said, we're just weak with the ball. We didn't make good decisions, but that wasn't the only problem offensively. He told me we stood around for 20 minutes. We didn't value the possession. We didn't have ball movement and certainly didn't play offensively like we have before. All right, thank you very much, Shannon. We start the second half. St. John's with the basketball. What do they have to do to get over the hump, Jim? Well, one, they can't turn the ball over, but what they've been doing now is attacking this Duke team off the dribble, off the swing, not just settling for long contested jump shots. Simon down the lane, step back 15 footer, and it rattles home. And once again, get two feet in the paint, then decide to make a play, whether it's one for yourself or open up for the teammates, because if you take long shots against this Duke team, they have multiple players that can advance the fast break, get out and run and beat you. Justin Simon, the Arizona transfer, inside now. Marvin Clark with a rebound. Simon in transition, and an offensive foul. Grayson Allen getting back on defense. Well, I'm talking about the defensive part. This is anticipation. The senior getting back, anticipating that Simon wanted to get to the middle of the lane. And why? Coach K is so upset about probably the defensive effort. The last five games in conference, teams only shooting 39%, scoring 66 points a game. So that first half wasn't indicative of the progress this team has made on the defensive end in the last five games. Grayson Allen with four points in the first half. 0 for 2, though, from the field. See if he tries to get going offensively for Duke. Bagley. Duval. Here comes Trent off the screen. Ahmed in his hip pocket. Trent, pogo stick off the heel. And the rebound goes to the Red Storm. Pons pushing it. Pons to the bucket. No foul. Carter contesting it and didn't draw a foul. These two big guys do a nice job, Jimmy, of staying out of foul trouble. What will they do? And they also understand verticality, going straight up and down, and not slapping down, as we see a lot of post, post players do, at the end of an attempted uh, shot block. Pons, NBA three. Mm. Uh -oh. Red Storm down by two now. Pons with 12. Toe to toe with the number four team in the country. Grayson Allen curling down the lane. Big swoop. No. Loose ball picked up. Duval. New shot clock. The freshman, the kick in the corner. Allen rising fire. Tank up and in by back. What activity. I mean. Because of the multiple ball movements and screening, it's tough to get a body on Wendell and also Bagley. That's why they're able to get inside of you and get the offensive rebound. And Bagley's still supposed to be in high school. He got reclassified. That's why he's at Duke. Well, that just speaks to the talent that he has, able to make that transition a year earlier and have an immediate impact. Back. I make that Carter. Down the lane, forced it up. He's fell, batted around, and a foul coming up against the Red Storm. Well, it's all about being active. When the shot goes up, don't allow your defensive player to put a body on you. Bagley right here, just off balance, but able to get inside. Look at the anticipation. Nobody. Tariq Owens is looking kind of at the ball out there on the perimeter. Who do I block out? Bagley able to play peekaboo on the baseline. Sneak in there. Now some foul trouble for the Red Storm. Simon goes out of the game. He picked up his third. Brian Trimble Jr. comes in for the first time in the second half. Deflected. He's got a hand on it. I just, I'm just so impressed with the way this Red Storm team is competing. Night in and night out, although it's not been that successful season for them so far. But that has never been the question in regards to their effort on the court. The things that's been questioned is being able to finish late. Right now, 
they have momentum coming out of halftime. Right now, they're kind of putting Duke back on their heels. Can they get over the hump and take the lead and then maintain that to finish the game? A lot of time left, but they're tracking in the right direction. Duke is led by as many as 10 in this game. Allen feeds the post. Bagley draws a double team. Dribbles out of it. Duval down the lane, and he's bumped and fouled. Basket will not count. And St. John's has to understand this. Duval and that first jump shot he took that was wide right since then he's turned down shots so be cautious on your closeouts and don't overextend because right now in his mind Gus he wants to get the ball to the basket instead of shooting that jump shot so make him shoot it make him shoot it make him knock down a couple and a five second violation against the freshman couldn't get it in bounds well defended by the red storm Bates with a cup. Brooklyn style. Brooklyn's the head dub. I mean, that time he just sized Bagley up. And he knew he was going to have some space. But Gus, his ability to finish over a taller player. And a turnover. Bagley ball for the setting the screen. His third. Well, some people tell you he's sick with it. Meaning right now he can just cross over, get to the basket. He finished that, Gus, up underneath with his left hand. Watch this. Wendell Carter Jr. didn't even have a chance to respond or react to the move by Pons. Pons. Oh, my goodness, in St. John's. The Red Storm rising at the Garden, first lead of the game. Against the number four team in the nation. 16.53 to go. 42-41. You're watching the Garden on Fox. I thought it was a pretty good point, and I had one form letter from Drexel. Put more pressure on Pons to perform, and he has a disappointment. And since being down by 10, St. John's is on a 15-4 run. Shimori with 10 of those 15 points. But I'm as impressed with them being consistent on the defensive end. St. John's. Shimori Pons, four 30-point games this year, 10 20-point games. He can score points in bunches. And since a quick start in the first half, Trent has been quiet. They bottled up Allen as well. Skip pass, Trent wide open. Rims out, and the rebound to Ahmed. St. John's can add to their totals right now. That's him in the box out that time, Ahmed. Back he had the height, but he got his body and anchored to his lower leg so he couldn't jump over the top. Pons turns the corner, the lock. Oh! Owens with the pound down. And St. John's takes a 44-41 lead. Inside, Bagley with the answer. They are getting it going at the world's most famous arena. 15 points for Marvin Bagley. And Duke gets back now into his zone. Yeah, how about both plays and passes by the point guards, Pons and Duvall, just setting their team makes up for perfection. Clark. Great rhythm in this game. Both teams knocking down shots. The ability to respond. That's how you keep yourself within fighting distance to knock off a team like Duke. Carter. And a foul. My goodness, Gus. Where's the trampoline at for Tariq? Oh, it's inside. We're talking about setting it up to perfection. And Shamoy Pons, we talked about his ability to make his teammates look good. Thank you very much. But right back, that young, outstanding freshman. Take this home. This team, justifiably. Well, you should be, because this is a team, when you watch the film, they can beat you in a number of different ways. One, and more importantly, Gus, they come out to compete. So basically, this is a, again, that's a road game for Duke in a hostile environment. This St. John's team can't win games. They just haven't been able to get over the hump in conference play. Remember, St. John's is first in the Big East in turnovers force, 18 per game. That's ninth in the nation. Right now, they force 14. Carter. 
this week go good. More importantly, guys, they've been able to take advantage of that by getting 17 points off of those turnovers. Remember, Duke starts four freshmen to go along with senior Grayson Allen. So they're learning as they go. Hostile environment. Sell out crowd here at Madison Square Garden. A little 2-3 zone once again. Coach K talked about using that to his advantage at times with his length on the wing. Hans, 12 to shoot. Trimble. Baseline, Ahmed, Booth, bang. Red Storm got it going now. But they're making sound and quick decisions versus the zone. Uh, I mean, the advantage you have when you play zone is to force teams to hold the ball, not St. John's. Excellent job of moving the ball quickly, then taking the shot when it's available. He's bad, reluctant to shoot the jumper. He wants to get to the hole. The glider, bat it around. Clark kicks it out. Pons, Allen back here. Pons, jump stop. 15 footer in and out. Loose. Grayson Allen with the ball. Bill Reagan to take it into the front court. Baseline, Duval. Loose. And Duke unable to keep it in bounds. We're going to go back to the patience on the zone right here. Marvin Clark Jr. is going to be able to get the ball. But watch it. Ahmed steps out to the corner. It was so much concentration on the inside. Wendell Carter Jr. had to stay connected to Tariq Owen so he couldn't get out. But again, it was a quick decision by Marvin Clark Jr. that got the open shot in the corner. And listen to the crowd. I don't want to do it, Gus. Johnny's on top of the Blue Devils, 49-45. Baseline, Bashir, now he drives, he gets it up, count it, Bashir Ahmed. Aggression. Well, again, the swing of the ball against the zone, now you attack on the baseline. Carter unable to get there, his feet have to be outside of the paint to take this drive away, and how about the strength, the creativity of Bashir to be able to knock that in. Bashir Ahmed. The senior from the Bronx adds the free throw. St. John's 10 and 13, 0 and 11 in the Big East. But they've been close in many games. Bagley inside Carter and he's fouled. Wendell Carter with the offensive rebound. And he will go to the line. Instinct. To be able to anchor on the inside, swim move, spin inside of Marvin Clark, and then root him out just enough to be able to, be able to corral that offensive rebound. Remember, Coach K earned his 1,000th career win on January 25, 2015, right here at the Garden, when he beat St. John 77 to 68, becoming the first NCAA Division. One men's coach to reach the milestone in that game. Tyus Jones scored 22 points. And Duke had a late 18-2 run to win it. And we had the pleasure, the honor of being on that call. Steve Lavin was the coach of the Red Storm at the time. And again, St. John's had momentum until that run at the end of the game. That's something that they don't want to see in regards to history repeating itself if it gets to that point. Eight points for Carter. Simon, back in the game, playing with three fouls. Fouls, oh, he's been sensational. Owens, pulls up. Oh, no call, looks like Bagley took that one out of the rim. Yeah, a little bit close right there. Here's Bagley, 24. He has 18. 52 to 50. Pons off the heel. Owens with the board. I got away with that. That's a shot you don't want. Momentum is on your side. Don't give this Duke team a chance to get out and create an exciting play with a long shot that results in some kind of fast break or transition basket. Pons driving. Scooping. Hey, hey. Plus the five. Jamori Pons with 19. Again, the creativity here. 
His ability to operate in close areas, in deep space, able now to get inside. And how many times have we seen this afternoon the finish with his offhand? And right there, I do believe that ball was on the cylinder. Duke got away with it right there. Jamori Bonds, the anonymous All-Big East freshman team last year, set the St. John's freshman record for points with 573. Now he has 20. He's already scored 1,000, and he's only a sophomore. Man, I gave him too much credit. I keep forgetting that he is left-handed, but he's finishing over a lot of his bids when he's able to go Sign. to the basket. Here's Pons. He checked. Loose. Owens dies. Corrals it. Body's flying. Grayson Allen getting up. He took a tumble. Jump ball to call Duke basketball. You think this means something? Yes. Tariq Owens on the ground. Diving. Getting after it. Off the tough shot. Understand how important these possessions are versus this Duke team. Howie Garfield would have loved this game. Seeing these kids go out and compete like this. Grayson Allen. He's the senior. He's got to start looking for his offense. Here's Allen. Lobs it. Badly. Knocked away. Taken. Owens and a foul. Badly called for the foul. And that's his fourth. He'll have to sit at the 1224 mark of the second half. Well, how about the deflection that time on the defensive end? That caused the ball to go up in the air and on his second effort went right over the back. Not a lot of contact on that, but enough for the official to think it was a foul. Mike Krzyzewski, the jacket is off now, folks. He know he's in a dog fight. One of the greatest coaches in the history of the game of basketball. Simon surveying. Here's Pons. Draws attention every time he touches it. Six to shoot. Simon, four to shoot. Kicks it out. Deep. Oh my goodness, Amir. Ahmed, rather, with another big time jump shot. He has 15. Largest lead of the game for St. John. Ball away from the ball. Well, again, not panicking under pressure. Eleven forty-two to play. Legendary player. The game reset sponsored by SoFi Rethinking Personal Finance. Let's take a look. Both teams with three timeouts. Possession arrow favoring Duke. Let's take a look at the foul. Bagley's got four. Marvin Clark with four. Simon with three. You know, it's interesting. Coach K talked about when guys pick up fouls early, they want to see if they can play through them because later in situations where in a one-game scenario, if they're comfortable playing with the foul, they'll get themselves through that situation. So it'll be interesting to see when he chooses to bring back Marvin Badger. St. John's with 23 points off 16 Duke turnovers and a foul on the inbound pass. And that will go against Ahmed, his third. And, and how about, you know, you saw Howard Garfinger with the fingers going like this. Rashir Ahmed been doing that too. Yes. The second half, he's, he's been got on fire one. right now. Meanwhile, that is the 17th foul against the Red Storm, so that will send Bold into the line to shoot one and one. 8 of 14 from the free throw line this season. Right, and this is a 69% free throw shooting team. Again, offensive rebound. And a region pop from behind on Pons. And if you're Duke, Gus, what you want to be able to do is continue to attack off the dribble, knowing you're in the penalty now. You're going to be able to get yourself to the free throw line. Now you send an 85% free throw shooter, Grayson Allen, to the line. He ranks sixth in the ACC in free throw percentage. He's 0 for 4 from the field, only four points. And he missed the free throw. Wow. Duke, little shaky. 11.33 to go. Tremble, Simon, Pons, Owens, 
Ahmed for the Red Storm. Ahmed's been hot from the corner. Trying to shake up White. And a whistle. White called for his first foul. Yeah, that time White was straight up and down, so it was easier for Bashir Ahmed to kind of move him off the dribble. And once he committed to going back to the baseline, White couldn't recover enough and picked up a foul. 15 foul against Duke. Simon. Finds Owen. Power dribble to the hole. Can't get the roll. Carter with a strong rebound. Yeah, how about the defense that time by Bolden? Again, going straight up and down in the air. Do that. Oh, steps down oh, by Carter. Can't finish. Luis Pond picks it up. Here comes Pond over the midcourt line. Cross town traffic. Still on the move in the corner. And knocked out of play. Red Storm will hold on. You want to see classic defense by a senior? Grayson Allen right there, moving his feet. Not allowing Pond to kind of get by him, and even though the charge wasn't called, it was still really good transition defense by the senior. And the whistle. Why the ball thrown in bounds? Looks like another foul coming up on Duke. And that's Grayson Allen. 16 fouls against the Blue Devils. And Grayson Allen. Picking up his second. Owens. The handoff. Simon. Shaken. Rejected by Bolden out of play. Well, Simon knew what he wanted to do, but that time he's a little off balance, Gus. And be being off balance, watch at the end. He's not as able to explode up. So he jumps into Bolden. Bolden right there. The height just won that battle. 13 to shoot. Simon looking. Now Ahmed will back it up with tennis shoe. Guarded by Grayson Allen. Takes him off the dribble. Lost it. Out of bounds. And it's still Red Storm basketball. As you mentioned in the first half, when St. John's, when they relax, they play much better basketball. When they get higher quality of percentage shots. Ahmed. Block from behind, out of bounds again with two shots. Wow. Two to shoot. The height, the length of this Duke front line. Two to shoot. Pons knocked out of his hands, and the Red Storm turned it over for the ninth time. And the Duke bench right now is up. They understood how important that defensive possession was to send the message to the St. John's team. That defensively, these last 10 and a half minutes are going to be tough on you. Let's see if they can convert that on the offensive end to a basket. Red Storm digging in on defense with their largest lead of the game. Knocked away, Simon with the steal, Simon to the basket, and a foul. I don't know, the turnover, Simon says, give me that. I'm going to take all of it and get down the court. The little things, Gus. With Justin Simon, the redshirt sophomore from Temecula, California, originally played at Arizona, transferred to the Red Storm. Seeing big minutes now. Only had three points on Wednesday against Xavier. He has four. Make it five. Well, his role is so big because now, by being a major ball handler, he, he allows Samori Pons to kind of get some rest sometime within the game. It allows him to play off the ball on the wing so he can attack from different angles instead of always having to be initiated. And Pons with the offensive rebound. Crosses over. Shake. Rattle. Loose. Ahmed in the corner. I'll tell you what, this feels like an NCAA game right here. And you know what? The crowd was ready to explode at that Basket by a man would have dropped in. Duke scoreless in the last three and a half minutes. And Steele Pons just takes it out of Carter's hand. He's got Owens ahead of him. Pons, the finger roll, no. Ahmed, the rebound. And knocked out of play by Duvac. I'm going to tell you what, Gus. Duke may have gotten away with somebody. Somebody's hands, I believe, grabbed the net when the shot was at the rim. But the officials weren't able to see it.
Just take a look right here as he goes up. Watch the net. That's basket interference because it pulled the rim. Trimble for three. Owens trying to save it, and he crosses the baseline out of bounds. But this Red Storm team is hustling hard. You got to match that effort. You got to match that intensity that a team that's been struggling, Gus. They know how badly they need it. So here comes a freshman through foul. He's turned it over four times. He's got to make good decisions. Trent, the leader. And he's fine. So Gary Trent Jr. alone on the line. Trent called for his third foul. Gary Trent Jr. I know his dad has to be so proud of this young man. All the work they put into playing at Duke. Blue Devils are taking a hard look at another NBA, former NBA player's son, Cole Anthony, who plays for Archbishop Malloy, the number one point guard as a junior in the nation. They went to see him last night. Well, Archbishop Malloy missed a shot at the buzzer last night okay. against Christ the King. Oh, my good partner, my good friend. Came out in 89. Great kidding Anderson. National champion Greg Anthony with UNLV. Pons. Championship spirit. Knocked out of his hands in a listen. 9 on 9 to play, folks. Can you believe this? The Red Storm. 0 and 11 in conference play. On top of Duke, the fourth ranked team in America. 59 to 51 in the Garth. This game honoring a legendary, iconic figure in the game of basketball, Howie Garfinkel. And this is the mecca of college basketball, the world's most famous arena. Pons now with 21. And both teams in the penalty, Gus, advantage St. John, who sh shoots it at about 73 and a half percent. Pons, another one of those great Brooklyn point guards, a la Stephon Marbury who retired, who will retire this year after playing in China. Trent, 16 foot, straight up and down. Gary Trent under control. And how about him clearing space, two dribbles. Now the size and length of Tariq Owens wasn't gonna be able to affect that nice 15 foot pull up. 17 for Trent, the freshman. Pons, double T, picks it up again to the cup. Shamori Pons putting in work. Gus, you talking about creativity. Going to his left, the lefty up in the air, initiates the contact, absorbs the contact, and then able to finish right over the top. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Brooklyn, stand up for your main man. Mm. And he has a free throw. Pons on his way to 30. 16 points he scored in 12 minutes here in the second half. Red Storm up, 64-53. But they are playing Duke. Inside, Carter, wheeling. Double pump up and in, big man. And, I mean, that was good defense that time inside. But better offense, a way to tight rope the baseline, and then the athleticism, Gus, to finish on the opposite side of the rim. 64-55, 10 points for Carter. Simon, trying to find his rhythm. Will he take that jump shot? Cross court. Ahmed on the hop, banks it in. Bashir Ahmed has been brilliant. He had six and a half done. He has 17 now. He and Shamori Pons do an excellent job, Gus, of splitting by jump stopping up in the air, splitting the defense, and then able to explode the finish between the defenders. Carter again with a quick turn on the baseline, and he's fine. 7.35 to go, folks. You don't want to miss the finish of this one. My goodness, big fella on the baseline, spin move. Excuse me, you're there, reverse up under, showing you some athleticism. And Bashir Ahmed, been hot the second half, is not going to stop now. Soft kiss on the glass. Hey, well, this season, in his first year, as we take a look at the game reset. And the foul trouble. 
Williams and Marvin Bagley. But big, day, big day for St. John's, guys. And then Bashir Ahmed kind of reminds me of a former Duke player, Lou Aldang, the ability to get to the rim, long arms, athletic. And how about Shamori Pons? We talked about his athleticism, the ability to score. Pons and Ahmed in the second half. 27 out of the 34 St. John's points that can be done. And it's just incredible to watch this game. You know that St. John's has struggled, as we've been mentioning, since the top of our broadcast. We watched them practice yesterday. And I have to be honest, Jimmy, the second team beat the brakes off the first team. More impressive to me than that was that these young men didn't carry an attitude that, oh, it's just another game we're going to lose, or their heads were down, shoulders were slumped. They didn't have that attitude, and that's why it's showing well right now, because they do believe they're as good as anybody. They just haven't been able to complete some games. Marvin Bagley back on the floor playing with four fouls as Carter has been carrying the load. He has 11. Four at the break for Wendell Carter. Second free throw, money. 7.35 to go. 66-57. Duke has only lost three games this season. Two of them on the road to NC State and Boston College. The other at home to Virginia. They're young. Baseline. Owens steps out. Long rebound. Dives. Pons scoops it up at a new shot clock. Helter Skelter for the Red Storm. Well, as a shooter, Tariq Owens knew it was long, but he knew where the ball was coming. And that time, because Carter didn't come out to contest, he was able to keep the possession alive. They spread it for Pons. Down the lane, another one. Oh, wedged in. And the Red Storm will hold on the arrow in their favor. You think about this St. John's team, you say, okay, how did they get back in the game? Well, seven turnovers at halftime. You only have nine now. That means two. You valued the possessions. You didn't give opportunities to do, but you didn't take any away offensively from yourself. Owens. St. John showing patience now. Can they finish them? Is the key. Simon. Trimble inside Owens almost traveled, gets it up and in. What a beautiful pass by Trimble. What a pass, but what control that time by Owens to not drag his pivot foot, which would cause a turnover. Do that. And the freshman knocks on a huge three-pointer. 68-60. 6-17 to go. Jamori Pons. He has 25. Draws a crowd on the way. 13 to shoot. Goes baseline. Finds a cutting Simon. Out of bounds. Last touch by Duke. Let's go back to that Tariq Owens bucket right here. Look at this pass by Trimble right here. But look, the ability to catch, gather, and then explode by not having the balance shows you what kind of elite athlete Tariq Owens is. The Red Storm, they've lost 11 straight, folks. Up by eight, 547 to go. Simon crosses over. Spinning. And he can't get the roll. The, the recognition. Coach Mullen wanted that isolation up top. Duval double pump straight to the bucket. And here come the Blue Devils. There is an incredible electricity in this building right now. Pons picked up. Owens blocked. Carter out of nowhere. Duval picks it up, finds Grayson Allen, Allen looking, back to Duval, baseline, Carter, jump hook, big fella, getting busy right now, Duke refusing to flinch, 7-0 run, timeout red score, 447 to play, 68-64.
You know this Duke team had a run at us. Bob's been struggling a little bit with his offense, but in the last few minutes, he's been able to get to the basket and the defense, the long arms. Wendell Carter Jr. taking it away. Translation, Duke basketball is back. They're back in the game, not going away. Carter showing all of those beautiful talents with Bagley in foul trouble. Wendell has stepped it up for Duke. And with 4.47 to play, we've got a 68-64 game. St. John's is led by as many as 11. Duke by as many as 10. Carter and Duval have scored the last 11 points for the Blue Devils. Well, two things. One, St. John's can't get comfortable and try to slow the pace down. Last couple of possessions, they did that. But let me go back. Being mentally strong and prepared. Being disciplined. The play that Carter got the block. Well, Shamari Pons dribbled the ball in the traffic. Chris Mullen was telling him to take the timeout. See, that whole possession never would have happened with the points at the other end if he'd have taken that timeout. So Simon will inbound it. Along with Tariq Owens, Trimble, Pons, and Bashir Ahmed. The Red Storm have to remain aggressive. They do. And right now you are playing the Duke's hands if you don't by slowing it up. Pons blocked from behind. Owens with the offensive rebound. Shot clock doesn't reset at 10. Simon pulls up. Short. Keeps it alive. Out of bounds. And it's St. John's basketball. Just a little bit quicker. St. John's is to those 50-50 loose balls right now. While Duke is kind of watching, the pursuit is coming hard and heavy for the offensive boards by the Red Storm. Bill Covington knocks to the floor of the official. Are we in March? Now it feels like it, doesn't it? Bonds. Teardrop. Oh, Shamori Pons again. He has 27. Duval to the hole. Up and in. It's amazing, but Duval was able to hit that jump shot in the corner. His body language totally changed. Now he's more aggressive. He's more confident. The ability to respond after Pond's basket is an indication of that. Duval with nine points. Pond's turns to a hole again, and he can't lay it down. Here comes Grayson Allen. Carter calling for it inside. He's got position. Up top, Bagley. Get credit. Justin Simon inside on Wendell Carter Jr. Never allowed him to establish deep post-up position, even though Bagley was eyeing him and targeted him to get the ball. Pons. They're going to keep it in his hands down the stretch. Three minutes to go. Simon cross court. Ahmed's hit some big shots. And he's fouled. And we'll go to the line. Under three minutes remaining. St. John's has lost 11 in a row. Can they hold on? We'll find out right after this. Wow, the new one. The foul trouble, Bagley has four. Clark and Simon with four for the Red Storm. But well, what a day for Shamori Pond. But so effective, especially when he goes to his right and come back and use his left hand, knocking down jump shots, putting tremendous pressure on the Duke defense by not just settling, but attacking. But the, key, the thing is, down the stretch, it's not going to be about his scoring so much. It's going to be more about his decision making these last three minutes of the game. That's going to determine whether this St. John's team can close this game out. Bashir Ahmed at the line, 17 points. He had six at halftime. 
He's a 58% free throw shooter. Red Storm have to hit their free throws down the stretch if they want to win this game. They had trouble hitting free throws against Xavier on Wednesday. Second free throw goes. Well, last time, good trail by seven. St. John's, they went on the 18-2 run in the game we spoke about before. He came back to win. 72 to 66. Duval turns, reverse, and it's good. This kid is growing in front of our eyes. He's growing right now. The attention to detail from St. John's as far as guarding the ball off the dribble has feigned a bit. That's allowed Duval to be able to exploit it and now just have free reign getting to the basket. Simon, guarded by Grayson Allen. Hans. Ten to shoot. Hans, survey. And he throws it away. Badly, kicks it out. Trent, rising fire three. Spirit time bucket. Gary Trent with 20. And just like that, Duke down by one. And you mentioned it, Jimmy, decisions. Blue Devils on a 14-4 run. Under two to go. Inside, Owens. And he can't hold on. He turns it over. You, you, you hate to say it, Gus, that we've seen this before with the St. John's team in regards to under three minutes. Not making the correct decisions again. You don't have to make that pass. Now you put your defense at a transition disadvantage and splash. Gary Trent Jr. able to take advantage of it. So do with the ball, a chance to take the lead right here. Trent Jr. Five. And Gary Trent Jr. will go to the line. He's one for two. He has 20 points. The freshman from Columbus, Ohio. And we're level. 72 up. Marvin Clark back in the game. The, 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 the issue and the challenge you have with your St. John's is this, guys. Mentally, you can't check out and say, here we go again. Because now the ball is turning. Duke has momentum for the lead. And the Blue Devils take the lead on a 16-4 run in the last five minutes. They rise to their feet here at the world's most famous arena. Chris Mullen calls a timeout. 129 to play. His team, his alma mater, down by one. And we'll stay right here. You know what I saw in the last four possessions, maybe even five, is Coach Mullen's basketball NBA knowledge. What he wanted to do is run high pick and roll. I love it, but I love it when it comes off of movement. That way, the Duke defense is not locked in and ready to play. When they've been successful, Gus, off the high pick and roll in the middle of the court is when the ball swung side to side, got back, and bam, they've been able to get easy baskets off of that. High drama. This is the guard. This game honoring the memory and the legend of Howard Garfinkel, the architect of the five-star basketball camp, which jump-started the career of many coaches. And many great players were discovered. Here we go, folks. 73-72, they give it to Pons. Backs it up. 20 on the shot clock. 123 on the game clock. Here's Pines driving off the glass and in. And the Red Storms back up. Duval quickly into the front court. 74-73. Duval bumped and he will go to the line. 
Well, how about the drawn up play? This time, it really wasn't going to be a pick set by Tariq Owens. He was going to fade and slide the pick. And how about the read by Shamori Pons, left hand off the glass. But once again, the easy dribble penetration. The ball in the last four or five minutes has been able to do this consistently against the backcourt of whoever's guarding them from St. John's. And Marvin Clark is fouled out with 108 to play. Red Storm up on Duke, 74 to 73. Heading to the free throw line. Duval has not attempted a free throw today. He has 11 points and four assists. And he's only a 60% free throw shooter on the year, guys. So, but he's playing with so much confidence right now that I know he's going to the line. We know that these two are money. 60% foul shooter Trey Duval. We close in on a minute. The Red Storm have lost 11 straight. They've got the number four team in the country. On the ropes, on their home floor. Pons, baseline, keeps it inside. Nice pass, oh and rejected out of bounds by Carter. With wow. five to shoot. Gus, I mean, this is just reaction. Getting back and now timing it up. T Tariq Owens really couldn't handle the ball. That's why he couldn't get a shot up quick enough. Four block shots for Carter. Five on the shot clock. Hans, he'll look to take this if he can get it. And a timeout called by the Red Storm. Their final timeout. Gus, it's such a tough angle to get the ball in the corner because you don't have a lot of real estate to work with. And plus, you got a 6'11 guy, five seconds on the clock, once you get it in, to get the ball in. So it's a tough angle all the way, so it'll be interesting to see how, what play Chris Mullen draws up to get it in. All right, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for Duke. We'll take on Carolina on Thursday. On the road, followed by another game on the road against Georgia Tech. VTech at Clemson and then Louisville. Red Storm at number one Villanova, Marquette, DePaul. They'll go to Milwaukee and then Seton Hall. You're talking about a tough schedule for St. John's. You play against a ranked Xavier team. You come in here, non-conference game against the number 14 Duke, and then you play the number one team next week. So you walk out of here with a W. So what kind of momentum and energy and excitement that brings you going in against Villanova? We've already seen an upset today. Number seven, Kansas, losing at home to Oklahoma State. Mike Krzyzewski. How many white knucklers has he been a part of during his illustrious career? So here we go. Simon will throw the ball inbounds. Ahmed, triple. Owens, Pons. Five on the shot clock. He got something cutting to the basket off the baseline. Simon, got to get this one in. Pons, five to shoot. Let's it fly. Oh, he hit it. Shamari Pons with 32, 36 seconds to go. Grayson Allen, and he answers. Woo! What a game at the Garth. 77-76. Timeout, Duke. Well, 
I mean, can you get any better defense than this? But that space created by the fade by Pons allowed him to get the shot up. And right here, you know, Gary Trent Jr. is thinking, I don't want to foul. Just good pressure. But it's been that kind of day. And then the senior, Grayson Allen, on the opposite end, able to respond for the Blue Devils, able to catch, turn, in rhythm. It ain't over with yet, guys. And that was Allen's first made basket of the game. He has seven points. He's one of five from the field. Duke with one timeout remaining. St. John's out of timeout. So with 33.4 seconds remaining. 3.4 differential between the game clock and the shot clock. If you're Duke... What do you do? What, they're going to pressure up, but not full court because they don't want Shamari Paz to be able to get momentum and beat him. The thing is now, and down the tendency is to, with this, with a shooting team, is to find a worst free throw shooter, maybe foul. Okay, get it over with. See if you can get a steal first and then foul for St. John's, who's been uncomfortable finishing games once again, guys, to get to the free throw line and beat you. Remember, at the end of the Xavier game on Wednesday night, St. John's failed to get the ball in the Pons' hands when it counted. 77-76, a sellout crowd at the world's most famous arena in the Garth. This game honoring Howard Garfinkel. Simon. Will inbound the ball. Duke picks up full court. Looking for that steal. The Red Storm have to remain under control. Simon. Looking. Bouncing. Finds Owens. And a quick foul. With 32.2 to go. And that will send Owens to the line. He has not attempted a free throw. But he is a 74% free throw shooter. And that play was designed to get Bashir Ahmed out of the way. He's only shooting 58%, so you either wanted Pons, Owens, to be able to get the ball. But some big free throws here for Tariq Owens. <laughs> 78 76 back, back in. And he gets both. 79-76. Here comes Duval. Plenty of time for Duke. And he for three. Get a quick two. Going too slow right here, guys. Duval. Hands it off. Allen for the tie. Off the heel. Back into the rebound and a foul on the floor. Owens trying to box out Bagley. And Bagley will go to the line. And Owens would have been fine, but because he was backing him out, forcing Bagley out, that forced the official on the baseline to give the call. Watch, Treat Owens is in great position right here. And that's a tough call at the end of the game on Tariq Owens. So, yes, I think this is that little grab right there with his left hand that calls the foul. Bagley, four for six from the line today. A 62%. Make that 67% free throw shooter. And he misses the first. one good 79 77 Jack White comes in now he comes in so he can foul you want to get Bagley out of the game because he does have four again Hans or Owens St. John's out of timeouts here's Pons Allen lost his footing Pons and Shamori Pons will go to the line where he's four for five today 17.5 to go Chris Mullen looking to get over the hump. That's what he told us. We've got to find a way to do it. My boys play hard. But we just haven't been able to find the right combination. Pons. Back 
Bagley back in. Seventeen point five to play in regulation. And the second one goes. Eighty to seventy seven. Seventeen seconds remaining. Here come the Blue Devils. Allen looking. Duval driving. Knocked out of his hand. Allen lets it go. Off the back rim. No. Three seconds. 2.7 seconds and a foul. Can you believe this? St. John's 2.7 seconds away from shaking off the demons. Coach Garnaseca on his feet. Two for two. <laughs> so hard to finish it off, Gus. So hard. He has to make one. Allen talking to his teammates. Get me the ball. One more for Owens. And he gets a second. Duval, two seconds. Duval. And it's over. St. John's. They suck the nation. Chris Mullen and the Red Storm beat the number four ranked Duke Blue Devils. 81 to 77. Pods with 33. And the Red Storm. the 77 the final for Jim Jackson and Shannon Spake I'm Gus Johnson saying so long from the world's most famous arena the first